r slash ask credit by Redmond Dites. What is an industry secret that you know? The stuff that makes movie theater popcorn taste like movie theater popcorn is called flavicle. It's a salt-like additive that you can buy yourself and add to your popcorn at home. A carton lasts forever because you only need like a teaspoon of flavicle per cup of kernels and it's indistinguishable from the popcorn you get at the movies. Just last night we were playing a gig, and my guitarist said he was going to show us a little trick he uses to get everyone on the dance floor. Over the mic he asked everyone to come up in front of the stage, so we could get a group picture of everyone who came to the show. As soon as he got the pick, we started playing, and everyone stayed on the floor until the end of the set. It was a great. Theater seats aren't all the same size. Some are narrower than others, we use a variety to manipulate the sawtooth arrangement so that you look through a gap between heads not straight into the head of the person in front of you. That means some seats are better, that is wider, than others. When you're buying a higher end refrigerator, you're basically only paying for fancier doors. Most of the inner workings are the same, just a different door configuration. I used to work in the appliance industry. Used to screen resumes for small companies. Job requirements are more of a wish list situation. Never let some unchecked boxes deter you from applying, you have no idea what the applicant pool is like. The biggest boon, especially at small companies, is someone who legitimately cares. Most fitness models, coaches and influencers are using anabolic steroids, or did it once at least, and among competitive bodybuilders everyone does it, but almost no one admits it. As a former competitive weightlifter, way more people use anabolic steroids than most people think. Also, that actor who got in really good shape and gained a bunch of muscle for a role? They're using steroids. ER Veterinarian when your pets are hospitalized, or need to stay at the clinic, unless they're aggressive, need to be monitored very carefully, or we're absolutely slammed, they are constantly getting positive attention from the staff. I've had kennel attendants and techs cuddle up with patients on their breaks, myself and colleagues have made phone calls, or typed up records, while holding on to your pets, we routinely talk about how cute the patients are. In fact, it's a running joke that we would get fired immediately if we worked in human medicine, etc. And we do get attached to your pets. We know that your pet got into your weed, and we truly don't care. Seriously. Just be honest. We operate on a dredge basis, sicker things are seen first, regardless of how long others have been waiting. If you're a shitty person and you're constantly upfront complaining to staff about the wait times or the decor, or why there isn't enough staff, being difficult in other ways, being dismissive to the non-doctors, and your pet is stable, and has been treated similarly to another pet that came in around the same time, we are not picking up your file until we have to. So much of my job involves giving bad news talking to emotional people who often take out their feelings on those around them, and having to defend the costs of emergency care and surgery, that I'm not going to eagerly jump into taking a file for someone who's being difficult, before they've even been spoken to. Hospital suck at cyber security. Healthcare IT is held together with duct tape and twine. Related, pay attention to the treatment release forms. Your health data is being sent everywhere, and there's not a thing you can do about it. No sign no treatment. Edit. Apparently it is possible to opt out of your state's health information exchange, but it must be done with the exchange itself. The process varies by state, and can be painful. I was told during my driver training for a public bus company, if a car pulls out in front of you, causing you to slam the brakes, hit it. Let the passengers claim insurance from the car driver. If you slam the brakes and avoid the collision, the injured passengers will all can sue the bus company. Nutrition labels on small, not well-known brands can be inaccurate and nobody would ever know. Once you send your food product out to a lab to have a nutrition label created for it, that is the last time anyone is ever going to check it. 
It would take someone to pay for a new analysis at a lab to see if the percentage of qua gum, for example, is still accurate, and nobody is going to do that. In the restaurant industry, the secret is that the special sauce is often just a clever blend of the same condiments you have in your fridge, mayo, ketchup, and a dash of mystery. Some plus size models get liposuction on their face and necks to be more aesthetically pleasing. Dawn dish soap is the single best way to clean up an oil spill on the small scale. The United States government went to great lengths to try and make their own cheaper in-house equivalent of Dawn for cleaning up oil. But they found that they couldn't make it better or cheaper than Dawn already did, so they just buy Dawn. The military typically disposes of old vehicles by parking it somewhere on a large base and abandoning it. Sometimes they use them as training targets. It's cool but eerie to see. I know where there's a lake that's full of shaman tanks. They drove them out there in the late 50s in the winter and left them to fall through. Teachers routinely fudge kids grades upward. Sometimes it's because a kid is nice. Sometimes it's because administrators pressure us. Sometimes we are afraid of being sued. That high graduation rate at your local high school? It's most likely due to the books being cooked. Edit to add. I've said this before, but this whole situation is a prime example of good at slaw in action. When a metric becomes a target it loses all meaning. The high school I teach at touts a low number of suspensions and no expulsions this year. And yet, it is almost guaranteed that a student will tell me to go fudge myself when I ask for his phone tomorrow. Edit to add again. For all the people talking about kids getting held back. That doesn't happen anymore really. I've been teaching 20 years and I can count on one hand the number if students I've seen get held back. It's exceptionally rare. No matter how high up the chain you get, nobody really knows what's going on. Everyone is winging it for any work that falls outside their very specific area of expertise. Your massage therapist doesn't care about your size or your body hair, but they appreciate when you've showered within a few days of your appointment and have brushed your teeth. They aren't judging you for the things you feel self-conscious about, but they are judging you if you are an entitled asshole. Saying things like my wife would not be happy if she knew how hot you were. Although it may seem to you like a harmless compliment, is creepy and will get you on the do not schedule list. That one shouldn't be a secret, but apparently, there are men who are oblivious to this. The blue flakes in your laundry detergent are just the white flakes dyed blue. If you'd just actually freaking reboot your stuff, you'd have to spend a fraction of the time dealing with broken tech. Right now, mass transit agencies in most cities in the United States are dealing with massive shortages of drivers, mechanics, and many other administrative positions. The drivers are working 70 plus hours every week, just to keep the system going. Drivers need a CDLB with P endorsement, therefore there is nothing illegal about working a driver 17 hours a day. Therefore, transit agencies are forcing drivers, the union contract in most cases, using inverse seniority, to work constantly. It's a huge safety risk but no one seems to care about that. Food expiration dates, especially on shelf stable foods, are essentially arbitrary. Nutrition labels are often wildly inaccurate. It is technically not legal to use false information, but it's very very rare to be caught unless you are making health related claims. Those food certifications that you see on food labels are provided by for profit companies that bill you monthly, so they are highly incentivized to certify as many companies as they can and actively ignore violations. A shocking number of ingredients that are illegal or heavily regulated in other developed countries are perfectly legal and mostly unregulated in the United States. The same companies that make store brands at higher end stores, like Wegmans and Whole Foods, make them for cheaper stores, like Walmart and Aldi. I could go on. Walmart assistant store manager training includes a day of indoctrination into anti-union propaganda. 
there's a whole video section and their legal team comes in to tell you why unions are bad. When you book through a third party for hotels, we treat you differently. It's not malicious, but just know that your experience will be different than a direct booking. In IT, we are really all just a lot better at Google than the rest of you. Influencers don't make nearly as much money as you think. Open houses don't sell houses. They are solely for the listing agent to meet people and hopefully get more clients. Most people who go to open houses are Aussie neighbors and people who spend their weekends checking out open houses. Ice cream used in commercials is actually colored mashed potatoes. Don't drink the tap water, coffee, or tea on airplanes. Ever. Potable water systems are gross. I've had to flush them before, and oh man. If you want a drink on a flight, get bottled water or a can of soda or alcohol. Most teachers know when something is going wrong at home. If a radio station says they are taking the extra caller, they are not. They are just taking a random caller. I worked at a radio station, and they told me to just get a winner. Also a radio station employee. It depends on the contest. There were more than a few that I was required to record the entire sequence of Caller 1, hang up and try again. Caller 2, hang up and try again. For audit and other reasons. I've been Caller 1 to 10 before. It was a contest where, if you heard one of bands playing their birthday bash, and be Caller 10 you got free tickets. It was one of the smaller bands on the show that had a song was hardly a hit, and it was like 2.30 in the morning. The girl working the phone was so amused, was that you calling 10 times in row? Yep. She said during that promotion sometimes they would get no calls at all. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this one, why not like and subscribe for more. Have a nice evening. Tell your friends about me.